This is Leia Keeman, and she will introduce the author. Thank you so much, Beth, for the warm welcome. Thank you all for joining us this afternoon. Before I introduce the author, Sarkhana, I'd like to thank the Michael M. Russell JCC for partnering with Chabad to host this beautiful event. I'd like to specifically thank David Sarawit, who always keeps the humor while planning difficult logistics. <laughs> I'd like to thank my fellow Chabad Shluchas of North Dade, Chani Forta, Shlucha and Aventura Chabad, Razel Rosenfeld of Wababich Aventura North, Hindi Rosenberg, and Rachel Karp of Chabad of Sky Lake. <laughs> they join together and bring incredible programs such as this to our communities through Project Connect, and of course, working tirelessly at all times in general to ensure Jewish continuity in North Dade. I'd like to thank Rebetzin Nili Segel from Kosher Healthy Me for the beautiful lunch she prepared for us today. Everything Nili does is with heart and you taste the love in her food. I'd like to thank the Chabad Chayel team, too many to mention individually. You know who you are, know that you're appreciated. I'd like to thank my husband, who is my inspiration, mm. and of course the Rebbe, who is our inspiration. About Sarah Khanna. In the Crown Heights community where Sarah Khanna resides, she's a legend. Over here, we needed to put on the flyer as seen on Fox, NBC, ABC. In Brooklyn, you'd be hard pressed to find someone who wasn't either helped by Sarakana themselves, including me, or at least related to someone who was. So a flyer might say, results seen on Moshe, Chaim, Aaron, Mushka. Everyone knows someone who Sarakana helped. Sarah Khanna is Baruch Hashem, the mother of seven children, a master herbalist, classical homeopath, and Bert's board certified lactation consultant. I'm not sure why. I usually see her description written the other way around, with mother of seven children as a side note at the end. All the mothers in the room can agree that if any, ex if any of her experience gives her the right to speak about moodiness, it would have to be being the mother of seven children. I can go on and on about Sarah Khanna, but what makes her so unique and so special is her humility and her faith. Sarah Khanna knows that healing is really Hashem's alone. So before I call up Sarah Khanna to the podium to impart her knowledge, I'd like to take a moment to say together a chapter of Tehillim to ask Hashem for healing, for all those who need, for ourselves, for the community, and the whole world, with good health, happiness, nachas, prosperity, and of course, Mashiach, when we'll truly live in a utopia and a constant state of good moods. When? And of course, now. As I grew. I'd like to dedicate this day of learning to a victory for CHAP so that 200 children should not be without their daily learning of our heritage and our holy language. And to my uncle Moshe, whose yard site is today, his first yard site, Moshe Ben Yehuda, who lived his life dedicated to making others happy, making sure everyone around him was in a good mood. So we'll say the chapter of Tillam together. I think you have it in front of you. No. No? Can the paper pass around with the Tillam? Can I, can I get one? The rabbit team did a great job. Okay. It's in process. Flip it. Flip it. Turn it around. Flip the page. Twenty is a short one. Okay, chapter twenty of Tehillim. We'll say together. Lam natzayach mizmar ledavid yancha yancha Adonai biyom tara yisagevcha shem el heyako yishlach ezra chami kodesh and tiyan yisadecha yishkar kol nafasecha v'alas kol yidash nesela yitain lachach v'avecha bechol atazcha yimalei nirana bishosecha l'shem elahim mitzal yimalei Adonai kol mishalov mishalosecha.
thank you everybody for coming. I know how hard it is to get out of our homes and attend events. Um, the Jewish people are people of the book. And as our world changes, and there's thousands and hundreds of thousands of YouTube videos and Instagram, we must remember that reading books are really important. There's nothing calmer to our souls and our minds than crawling into bed with a yummy blanket and reading a book. So I'd like to thank the JCC for still having book clubs and book events, um, and it's important for all of us. So. I want to tell you a story. I'm from Los Angeles, California originally, now transplanted to Brooklyn, New York, and I come from the Hollywood Hills. Mm. And in the Hollywood Hills, if anybody's been there, you drive like this, and like this, mm -hmm. and like this, and it's a blast, but you're kind of driving like this. And my mother had to drive us into the city from the canyons, and there was one corner where we'd almost always have an accident. And my mother would say, thank God we didn't get killed today. And the next day she'd go, what was that idiot? Oh my God. And the next day she'd say, okay, we're alive again. And this was like every morning of my life. So all of a sudden my mother started getting frustrated and frustrated and then angrier and angrier. And she said, we need a stop sign on that corner. This is not safe. So she called the city and the city, this was way before Facebook said, you have to go knocking on doors. And if you get a thousand signatures, we'll put a stoplight there. So with, stop sign. So with my mother's anger, she went knocking on these doors. And to this day, there is a stop sign there. So oh. I'm going to talk about moods and how great is anger? Anger is a powerful emotion. When you're anger, angry, you're stronger than ever in your life. So the question is, why did Hashem God give us these moods? Sadness, frustration, anger. And it's very interesting because with construction workers, they very often have accidents where they fall and land on their coccyx bone. And what do you do with it? It's very painful. They just kind of cut it off these days because you can't get rid of the pain. Mm -hmm. And they find that what happens is that their moods become stable in such a way where they're moodless. And people around them say it's impossible to live with them because <clears throat> everything's okay. They really have no emotions. So here we are with most of us, our coccyx bones in tail. And why the coccyx bone? Because the serotonin and dopamine goes from our brain, down our spine, down to the bottom of our spine, and all the way back up. And we know we also have it in our gut, which we'll talk about later. But being moody is actually very beneficial for us. If we're really sad and, 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 and feeling things deeply, it gives us the ability to be kind to someone else that's going through something that's sad. If someone's depressed, it may just mean that there's something in your life that you need to change. And back to anger. I mean, get three angry women in a room and they can change the world. So we were created to be very, very moody. The question is we wanna make sure that the moodiness or emotions don't get in the way of our success. So as Leah said, I've helped over 28,000 babies breastfeed. Mm. I've helped deliver as a doula 469 babies. And I gotta tell you that all the women that I worked with were powerful women and they'd say, you know, my moods sometimes get in the way of my success. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. We wanna honor our moods, we wanna know our moods are fabulous, but we wanna make sure that they get us to the next point and not get in the way of our success, right? So I want to tell you a story, <clears throat> and this is a true story. So I keep the Jewish Sabbath, which means I have a lot of guests at my house on Friday night. And if anybody's been into Brooklyn, we can have 15, 20 people. So I'm a mother of seven. I have a girl, five boys and a girl. And I'm in my kitchen, you know, burning my chicken, and my kids are complaining. My girls are in there not liking the bow on their hair, or their hair didn't turn out right, right? And all of a sudden, in the living room, where my five boys are, there's silence. Does anybody have kids? Silence is like, not what you want, right? So I leave the kitchen and I'm like a little bit nervous. I'm walking out of the kitchen, right? And in the living room, my table was already set for 20 people. My kids were dressed. My boys had black pants on and white shirts and black yarmulkes. Everything was set. And they had pushed the table up against the wall 
they took baby powder, put it all over the floor, and they said, Ma, it's a skating rink. And they went back and forth and back and forth. You can imagine. My whole living room was filled with baby powder. My table was ruined. My kids' black pants were now kind of this polka dotty white kind of a look. And of course, what did I do being a normal human being, a normal woman? Yeah. I started screaming like a maniac, of course. Oh my God, oh my God, I have so many people coming. Are you kidding me? And one of my kids slips, bangs his head, and I pick him up immediately and hold him and go, I love you, I love you, I love you. So here's the question. What happened that I went from crazy maniac screaming to passionately loving my child? And that's because women use both sides of their brain at the same time, okay? So we are officially crazy. I want to let you know that. We can love and hate our lives. We can love and hate our husbands. And we can be totally content in life and discontent at the exact same side, at said time. Now men, thank you for joining us. You use one side of your brain at a time. I'm not saying you don't have issues. We'll get to you later. Don't worry about it. But men, they kind of like think like this. And women are always yes and no. Yes, black and white at all times. So a woman named Dr. Brazel team did research and found that that's what gives us our ability to problem solve, is that we as women can see both sides of the coin at the exact same time. Hmm. What is more fascinating is when we get pregnant, our brains shrink by 60%, okay? Does anybody remember that brain fog? You're pregnant, you kind of go like, yeah, what did you say, right? So why is that? She said that when we're married, we can think of ourselves and our husband at the same time, because we can do that. Then our brains shrink and reopen in a different way and reformat itself, and we can think of ourselves, our husband, and our child. And if our brain, we get pregnant again, or can you imagine me and Leia? I mean, like, we are totally crazy, right? Our brain has shrunk and regrown over and over and over again. So that's an interesting thing to understand. So when you are challenged with something, it's very, very important to analyze it and say, okay, I know I can see both sides of this, men don't worry, you can problem solve. You just have to do it in a linear way, okay? And you're great, we love, we want men in our lives for sure. But it's important for men to know that women use both sides of their brain because it can appear like we really have no idea what's going on, but we really do all the time. So this talk is talking about how to be in control of these moods so our moods don't control us. Now. Here's the story. When you are losing it, it usually means that in your bloodstream, your cortisol levels are too high. Cortisol is what is higher in the morning and it lowers throughout the day. It's what gets us up and say, okay, I can face this crazy world, I can do it. But if our cortisol levels stay too high, we can be in a state of constant stress. So let's just pick a number. Let's say when our cortisol levels get up to 300, that's when we're likely to lose it, right? I'm at 300 a lot, by the way. So even if you lower your cortisol levels to 250, you still are very close to that 300. So the littlest things in life can make you think like you're losing your mind, right? So in this lecture, we're gonna talk about ways to lower your cortisol level so you can handle the struggles and challenges you have in your life. Now, research has shown by, um, Oh, what's his name? I can see his face. He won the Genius Award in Research on Stress. It'll come back to me. He has shown that if your mother was a little bit stressed during her pregnancy, you're going to be born with your typical level of cortisol higher than if your mom was calm. So anybody in this room have a mom who's a little bit stressed? Oh, <laughs> yeah. And here's the other part of it. All of us also lived in our grandmother's stomach. Yes, because when your mother was in her mother's womb, she had all the eggs that was gonna make you. So you lived in your grandmother also. Bizarre. So that means if your grandmother was a little bit stressed, you got a lot of challenges here, right? So it's important to know that your default number may be higher than other people just because you were born like that. Are there things you can do? Yes. So let me tell you an amazing study. There was an amazing study done at a university where they took, um, they took 450 students 
and they gave them each a pen. Oh, these are my glasses, but it was a pen. And they would put it in their mouth like this mm. and rate comics. And the next round, they would take the pen and put it in their mouth and rate comics to see if they were funny or not. And they found across the board, even when they redid this study over and over again, that when people had a fake smile on their face, mm. they rated the comics as funnier than when they had a frown. Sure. So a lot of researchers going into just making a smile, does it actually make us feel better? And the answer is yes, it does. It's a physiological response we get to smiling. So like when I'm in California, because I live in California in the summers and in New York in the winters, I know it should be switched. So when I smile randomly at people in California, they go, oh look, Sarkhan had a facelift just like me. Frozen smile, right? And when I'm in New York and I smile, people are like, oh my God, put away your wallet. She could be pickpocketing us for sure right now. So it's a little tricky. I hope in Florida it's a little bit easier. But here's the story. Let's say you're having a really bad, challenging day, which we all have. Some of us can have challenging days, challenging weeks, challenging months, challenging years. Yeah, for sure. So when you're having a bad day, you need to fake it and smile because you'll have a physiological response of lowering your cortisol levels. And you'd be surprised the effect that it actually has on other people when you just give them a little grin rather than what's going on inside of you, right? Because they don't care what's going on inside of you. If you smile at them, it makes them feel better also. The second important thing is to remember to cry. Crying is really, really important. I mean, you know, those of us that had that kind of tough background, especially you men, like, men don't cry, boys don't cry. Well, let me talk to you about the tears. Research has found that we have three tears in our eyes. One is on a daily basis, moisturizing our eyes. Mm -hmm. The second tear is if we get an eyelash in our eye, it pushes it out. And the third kind of tears is completely cortisol. So if your cortisol levels are up at 250 and you feel like crying, my philosophy is sob. Let your mascara smear down your face. Sit in the car and cry. Don't try to hold it back. And if you have a child that's crying and you say, oh, you're crying about this, I give you five more things to cry about. Keep on crying. Because if they continue to cry, their cortisol levels will drop and that's very important, okay? Let me tell you another tool that we have because I'm gonna speak about herbs and homeopathy. I'm gonna speak about herbs and aromatherapy in a bit, but I'm trying to give you inexpensive, no cost ways to on a daily basis, lower your cortisol level. Okay, so here's my next story. So um, living in Brooklyn, New York, um, we do not have those um, grocery stores where you step on something and the doors open like the parting of the Red Sea, those automatic doors. We don't have those. I don't know why Brooklyn is so far behind, right? So here I am. Um, it's on a Thursday late afternoon and I'm going shopping for Shabbos and I was um, quite pregnant, right? And I had a double stroller. Have you guys seen those double strollers, right? And I had like two toddlerish kids hanging off the side, right? So I've got this big belly, a double stroller, and two kids. And you know, I'm walking down the street trying to look attractive. You know how important it is for us women, right? Waddling, right? And all of a sudden it starts to drizzle. And I forgot to buy Gefils of Fish. Now, you can't have Shabbos without Gefils of Fish, okay? That is like the law. You have Shabbos, you have Gefils of Fish, and I ran out of it. So I'm like, Oh my God, what am I gonna do? Well, either I'm gonna go home because it's really gonna start pouring soon. I just have shops without the fields of fish or in order for me to get fields of fish, this is what I have to do, you ready? I have this big belly and I have to do a 180. And I have to push open the door like this. And I have to pull this double stroller into the store and then make another 180. That's really how it works in Brooklyn. So it's starting to rain and I'm like, oh my God, can I do this? artistic ballet, graceful mood in the condition that I am right now, and should I get the Gavilt fish? So I'm standing in front of the store, and someone walks in before me, and the door slams in my face. And the next guy holds the door open. I'm like, oh my God, I waddle through the store. And I say to him, there's two things. Either you're a superhero and you have a cape under your jacket, or you had the best mother in the entire world. Thank you for opening the door. So I get inside the door, in the store, and I say to my kids, here's the dealio. 
I need to buy one roll of gefilte fish. Each one of you can pick out two pieces of completely junky food, like the grossest stuff in the entire world, you know, red dye number 40, blue dye number, whatever you want. As long as you promise to keep it together when we go home in the pouring rain. My kids get out of the stroller, they're so excited, they buy their junk, I get my gefilte fish, we go home in a deluge, we get at the house, they sit at the table, and here's the most important thing. I didn't yell at my husband for it raining because it would have been his fault, right? But everyone was calm and everyone was in a good place. So what happened? Someone did a random act of kindness called rack. And random acts of kindness not only help the person that you're helping, it really helps you. Because clinical studies show that when you do a random act of kindness, your blood pressure lowers and your cortisol levels lower. So it's very important if you're having a bad day or a week or a month or a year, right? We can all relate to that, to do random acts of kindness because it really can make the world a better place. Now the Lubavitcher Rebbe had a, had a campaign where he said people need to start doing random acts of kindness. And at first I was like, yeah, really? Gonna bring world peace? I don't mm -hmm. think so. But when I did the research, I saw that it's a domino effect. Because when that guy opened the door for me, I was nicer to my kids mm -hmm. and my husband, right? Because that was just how it worked out. So that's an important thing. The next important thing is wearing colors that make you feel good. So when I speak on the East Coast, everyone's wearing black, and maybe we get a little bit of gray, right? At least in Florida, there's sunshine, so we get beautiful colors. But what we know about colors is that it can change our moods. So I forget which football um, club it was, but one of the football, um, what do you call them? Not club. League. Okay, whatever, league, yeah, whatever. That what they did in their football stadium was they painted the opposing team's locker room in pink. There were pink walls and pink toilet seats and pink showers. And they found that what happened was it demasculated them and they didn't have that sense of security. And actually it was a big complaint because they knew that pink is so soothing and calming and makes you feel good. And they did that intentionally to try to win those games. So when we look at color, color has a vibrational energy that vibrates and that's how we see it with our eyes. So you're having a bad day, put on your turquoise shirt or oh, in New York, I was gonna say a yellow scarf. You can't do that here. But it's really important to know the effect that color has on our cortisol levels. So if you're sitting in an office and it's really like blah, boring and depressing, you can put some colors around your desk. Even if you don't have a lot of money, you can paint like one door in your house a vibrant color because color makes us feel better and it's very important. My son's a physicist and he says to me, Ma, you can never talk about energy because you don't know what it is. We as physicists barely know what it is. But we know that as human beings, we vibrate energy. And you can walk into a room and say, oh, I just loved her the first time I saw her. Or you can say, oh, that person gave me the creeps. Or you could go out to a restaurant and you can say, you know, I don't love the food here, but I love the ambiance. I just love coming back here. So we vibrate energy. The colors we wear vibrate in energy and we vibrate energies. Dr. Judith Orloff talks about um, energy vampires, people mm. that just get their claws on you, their tentacles, and they seep out all your energy. So it's very important if you wanna be more in control of your mood so your moods don't control you, to really be aware of who is good energy for you and who is not. Now, if it's someone that you have to be around that's not good energy, you may still have to be around them. They could be your mother-in-law, mm -hmm. they could be your husband's best friend, it could be anybody. But what you need to do is protect yourself and be very aware of it. You can be kind and smile, but know that that energy could bring you down. And for us, even if we're having a hard day, we can bring light. Jewish women are asked to light a Shabbos candle every Friday night. Why? 
because this is a world of darkness if you didn't notice. I mean, you're in Florida, so you don't see it as much. You got that sunshine. But when things are dark and gloomy, to light one little candle mm -hmm. brings vibrant energy. Sure. And we have that ability to do it. So even if you're in a bad mood and things are going wrong, 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 and you're sitting in your car and you have to enter a place, you can sit there and do some dark breaths, some deep breaths and say, I'm gonna bring good, vibrant energy to the place that I'm going to. And true. it's hard to overcome those moods and that grumpiness and that frustration and that depression, which is really valid. Every emotion we're feeling is right and it can teach us something, but we can bring that vibrant energy. So let's review. We need to practice smiling even if we're not in the mood. We need to know that if we want to cry, it's really super, super important. We want to remember random acts of kindness because it's free. It doesn't cost any money. We want to make sure that we surround ourselves with colors that make us feel good. So when we look in the mirror, we're not like, oh my gosh, is that three more wrinkles? Never noticed them before. And we're more like, oh, I love that fuchsia top I'm wearing, right? And you want to make sure that you know if you're giving off bad energy, because we can do it. We can torture people around us mm. without saying a word, right? We can just be like, are you serious? Without even saying, are you serious? So we have that power to change the energy of the world. But not the world, I'm so sorry. At least the world, or the world around us. I don't know, the global world. That's for other people to take care of. So I want to introduce you to herbs. It says in Tehillim Psalms that Hashem, God, gave grass for the cattle and herbs for the service of man, and the word there is service. He also says that God put the refua, the healing in the world before the illness. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the days of creation, God made plants and trees before man. Now, in this lecture, I'm not against Western medicine at all. I actually guest lecture at medical schools, Columbia and SUNY Downstate, and I talk about and teach people how to integrate alternative medicine with conventional medicine. And I do TV segments for NBC, CBS, and Fox News, teaching people how to integrate it. So this is not anti, and if anybody's on medications and they're helping you, that's phenomenal. Phenomenal, and I'm not against that. But one out of five Americans are on psychotropic drugs. And what used to be totally normal, like, I'm having trouble sleeping, I want to occasionally stab my husband, and I want to scream and yell and throw my child out the window, is now looked at as, oh my God, you've got to be medicated. I mean, how many people haven't felt that like, sorry man, it's true, we feel like that sometimes, it's true. So to me, these are all normal feelings, of course you feel like this. But doctors are prescribing medications with seeing the patient less than six minutes, and when people go on psychotropic meds, they're not told about the side effects or how to get off of them. So this is how I look at us. There's either people that are totally together and happy all the time, and you gotta worry about them, right? They could crack at any second. And then there's people that really had bad challenges in their lives, and they need those psychotropic drugs. And then there's the rest of us, right? Most of us fall somewhere in between. I'm happy, I'm sad, I'm frustrated, I'm confused, right? And that's where herbs have been used for thousands of years. Depression is not new. Sadness is not new. It's been around forever and ever. We are people that are, Jewish people are by nature farmers. When we were given the land of Israel, it was a barren desert. They said that nothing could grow there. And anybody that's been to Israel, you look to the right, you look to the left, there's crops, there's plants, there's crops, there's plants. We took a barren desert and made it into an agricultural haven. We, by nature, are people that like to get our hands dirty and dig in the ground. When the Yemenite Jews were leaving their land, the stories were that they would pick up the herbs by their roots and put them in the pockets of their jackets as they were leaving. I know that the Spartan use herbs a lot more than we do. They were oppressed in a very different way than Eastern European Jews. We, from the Holocaust, we lost all of our elders and we lost our traditions and we lost our herbal traditions. 
when it comes to the Spartium, they use their turmeric, they use their paprika, they use their mints. They do it a lot better than we do. And this lecture is to just have you reclaim. I am not selling anything. I want you all to understand that herbs are your gift. They're called people's medicine, and they've been used forever and ever. Okay, so let's talk about some herbs. I'm gonna pass around some herbs that you can taste. The herbs I bought, brought are not contraindicated with anybody that's um, taking any medications. Um, if you don't wanna taste them, you don't have to. Do you wanna help me hand them out, Leah? This is how we try an herb. You put it on the top of your hand like this, Try to keep the top clean and lick like that. Okay, so I'm gonna be handing out some herbs. This is linden. Linden is one of the most beautiful flowers. Maybe put it on this side too, although I, one of them I like more. Linden is used for broken hearts, indigestion, and if you're having trouble keeping your heart regulated um, during stressful times. Um, in France, linden tea is given after a meal. In France, they cook with a lot of heavy fats, and they give you linden tea to help with the digestion. This is elderberry, which really has no, um, no known history of um, emotional help, except that it's antiviral and can help balance the immune system. So if you're getting colds and flus all the time, you're gonna be in a crabby mood. And I only brought one lemon balm by mistake. Lemon balm, so this is the bigger one, so everybody try to taste it. Lemon balm is an herb that's used. Um, it's antiviral, similar to elderberry, and it's used to calm you down without making you feel sleepy. So if you're going on an airplane, you can bring some lemon balm herb with you. If you have kids that come home from school and they're a little hyper and crazy like my five boys were, you can give everybody a little lemon balm. Um, with insomnia, it can help. Um, it's not one of my strongest herbs, but it's an herb that everyone should know about. And lemon balm, for our moms out there, you can make the tea and make it into popsicles and give it to your kids when they have fevers because it calms the system down. It's a little bit of a refrigerant. I'm gonna now be handing out, um, these are not to taste, these are just to look at. You can open it, they lose a lot of their smells. Before we hand this out, I wanna explain to you very quickly how we make herbal medicine and how we've made it for thousands of years. When you have a plant, it's only vibrant for about six weeks, the average medicinal plant, maybe eight weeks. And we used to take the plant, the leaf, the flower, the root, um, the seeds, put it in a jar like this, pour grain alcohol over it, let it sit for six to eight weeks and strain it, and you would get what is called a tincture. Mm -hmm. Oh, I closed that strong for the plane. Like this, this is what a tincture is. This is called herbal medicine. Um, we are gonna be making, excited to say, at the end of this talk, we're gonna be making what is called a medicinal vinegar, safe for everybody on any medication that you're on. We're gonna take herbs and spices, and yes, garlic and onion are considered an, an herb. We're gonna put um, some apple cider vinegar over it. You let it sit for six to, uh, well, I'm sorry, for one to four weeks, strain it, and you will have a vinegar that you can either marinate your chicken with, put it over your fish, use it as a salad dressing, or if you're sick, you can take a teaspoon of it. It reduces inflammation and stimulates the immune system. So this, we're gonna actually make a medicine super easy to do. So let's start handing out these dry. So this is lavender, and I'm gonna go through these quickly because I'm just trying to introduce you. Lavender we know can help um, with sleep issues, the um, essential oil is used. Yeah, this is just wildflowers. You can hand it over, over here. Um, lavender is used for, um, yeah, good, we're gonna give it another one. Lavender is used for people in a tea form or tincture for stuck sadness. You are allowed to be sad as much as you want, but when it gets in the way of your success, start drinking some, some lavender flower tea and it will help dissipate that. 
We have some chamomile. Chamomile we know can help with sleeplessness. It can also help when you have colds and flus. And um, chamomile has to be um, watched. It is in the ragweed family. I have some calendula, ah, which is not for the skin, emotions. Skin, huh? For the skin, right? Say it again. For the skin, yeah. For skin, yes. Calendula is used for skin. It's in a lot of products these days, and that's why I sent it around. It's the marigold flower. We plant marigold next to tomato plants because the smell of the marigold will help the pests not take over our tomato plants. Um, we've got some ginseng root. Everyone's heard about ginseng, very popular um, in Asia. Gives you a bit of a boost. Um, I didn't have many roses left, um, but all rose petals are edible, not the ones you get from the florist. And rose helps heal broken hearts. Studies show that when you hand someone a bouquet of roses, they actually start to feel better, and that's why we started bringing them to hospitals. But take it internally, and the Svartisha community knows they put rose water in everything. Mm -hmm. Rose water on your face can help tighten if you have any broken blood vessels. Um, our legs, oh, you can well. use the essential oil on any veins that are sore. And internally, it's for broken hearts. And marshmallow is not for the emotions, but it's such a pretty flower. Marshmallow is a plant that's used for colds and sore throats. And that's where our dessert-y, junky thing that we eat called marshmallows. Because when you make marshmallow tea, you pour hot water over the tea, it gets a little white foam, and kids used to eat the foam off of it when they were sick. So those are just some herbs for you to look at. You'll see they all have beautiful colors. We spoke before about how colors can heal us. Most of our plants that we use for emotional distress have purple flowers. And purple is, besides royalty, a very calming color. So I'm gonna hand around some other. Um, so in my book, Moodtopia, I do speak about, and don't open these ones, I just want you to see them. In my book, Moodtopia, um, I talk about the importance of smiling and laughing and crying, and I give a lot of other tips where you don't have to buy anything. It's just knowledge. But I do have a chapter on herbs and essential oils because it's part of our Jewish heritage. It's what we as Jewish women and men used for thousands of years. So I'm gonna talk about a couple herbs very quickly just to have in the back of your mind. Obviously in a 45 minute talk, you're not gonna become a master herbalist, but I want you to feel comfortable with herbs. Skullcap is probably one of my favorite herbs on the planet. It's for nervous tension. Like, yes, absolutely, absolutely nervous tension. Like if you're going to your kid's PTA and you're nervous about what the teacher's gonna say, or if you're going to an event and you just feel groggy and don't feel up to it, or you're going out on a date with your husband and you've been married to him for, you know, 55, 60 years, but you wanna like not be in a grumpy mood, that's where skull cap comes in. It's in the mint family. It's calming and soothing without sedating. And I wanna talk about the herb called motherwort. So motherwort is for hormonal grumpiness. Oh. And it can be used before your cycle, during your cycle, or after your cycle, or even if your cycle stopped happening. Because women tend to be a little bit grumpy and moody. And if you feel that black cloud is coming and you're like, no, no, I don't wanna go into that funk, you can take motherwort and it'll push that grumpiness away with two hands. So I had a guy that came into my office and he was complaining about everything. And again, I don't mind if people complain, they're usually right. But like he was going on a little too far. And I like called his wife, I said, did you notice that he, a little bit grumpy. She goes, oh my God, he complains all the time. So I gave him motherwort. Historically, motherwort is mostly for women. And I called my teacher and I said, I just gave a guy motherwort. She said, he's gonna be a better husband. Thank you for doing that. So even though motherwort is historically used for women, men need it all the time. Um, when you work with an herbalist, 
what we usually do is make a blend because you can be happy and sad and grumpy and crabby, right? So, we, so, so people have so many different sides to them that when you work with an herbalist, we give a combination of a couple different herbs, just like a jazz band. You have the saxophone which sounds wonderful on its own and the drums wonderful on its own but when you put all the instruments together we get a really phenomenal sound same thing so i just have some herbs i just want to show you i don't represent any companies um i'm just sharing with you what's out there i like this little herbal blend because it's in a pump it's under two, it's two ounces. You can bring it on a plane and you can just pump it into your mouth whenever you want. And, huh? That's called, I forget what it's called, Bliss? Liquid Bliss. You can look at these. These are just different combinations. And I wanna talk about St. John's Wort because it's so famous. St. <laughs> John's Wort works in depression if you have a certain kind of depression. The depression that hurts your body, the depression that gives you a headache, although migraines are a different story, the depression that hurts your stomach will do very well with St. John's Wort. So I want to take a moment and go on to essential oils and then our, I will open up this to questions and then those of us that want to join, we're going to make a um, an herbal mix that we can bring home to ourselves and then at the same time you can enjoy a delicious and healthy lunch. So um, those of you that have read my book know the story, those of you who do not, I will tell you a bit about it. Um, my daughter was hit by a car. We thought she was fine. She went to the hospital and a couple weeks later she became a quadriplegic. Oy. She became paralyzed from the shoulders down. We lived together in the hospital for 7.5 months. Um, it was a tragedy and an experience I never thought I was going to experience. I still had my kids at home. Um, five of my kids were still at home and they had no mother. I was with my daughter 24 seven. Mm -hmm. um, she was so paralyzed that she could not even call the help button. Um, so I didn't leave the hospital even for a moment at that time. I had just written my book proposal for Mootopia. I had not sold my book yet. Um, and I put that on hold, of course. And slowly but surely, unconsciously or subconsciously, I started using every tool I spoke about in Mootopia, one by one by one. I put a big, a big poster on the front of my daughter's hospital room and I said, you cannot enter if you're not in a good mood. Because I didn't want the nurses and the doctors to be in a bad mood and come take it out of my daughter. If they weren't together emotionally, I didn't need their help. I moved every piece of furniture in the, ho in the hospital room because I talk in my book about Feng Shui and I wanted to make sure that the energy in the room was as good as possible. I brought in plants, I brought in flowers, I went through all the hospital gowns and found ones that were clean and in the prettiest color possible. There was no way my daughter was going to wear a gown that was ugly or ripped. <laughs> and I would sit there through hundreds finding them and then I would ask the nurses to make sure that we just use these. Um, I gave her and myself herbs to stay somewhat emotionally sane, somewhat. Um, and I put posters up on the walls so she wasn't just seeing, you know, blank walls. And another thing I did that was very fascinating was I started spraying essential oils in her room. This is about 59 cents at a dollar store. And I would buy essential oils that were like, you know, seven bucks online. Mm. And I would spray them around her room because hospitals smell horrible, like death and dying. And I would spray some Lang Lang, I would spray some geranium, and the nurses would come in and say, Sarkana, what's the smell of the day? And oh my gosh, I love that smell, what is it? So the nurses started coming to our room more frequently, which meant that my daughter started getting better care. And they would say, Sarkana, do you mind if we eat lunch in your room? And the answer was, yeah, sure, come in. So I don't believe that essential oils 
can do everything they're saying on the internet. I don't believe they can help with borderline personality disorder or schizophrenia or real depression. But what they can do is move the energy of a room. If you can't sleep, you can spray some lavender oil. And let me tell you how essential oils really work best. Let's say you have a child that has trouble sleeping or even an adult. You can't use lavender oil once and it's gonna make a magical difference. What you do is after you take a shower or a bath, you put a little lavender oil on your nightgown or your children's nightshirt. Then you put a couple drops on the pillowcase. Mm. And after a couple weeks of smelling that smell associated with the time to go to sleep, your body will start kicking out the melatonin knowing that it's time to sleep. Does that make sense? Yes. So we know that our olfactory center, our nasal, the where we smell, has a very powerful effect on our, on, our, on our memory. If your grandmother made an apple pie and every time you went to her house an apple pie was in the oven, anytime you smell an apple pie, you're gonna remember your mother. So I'm gonna send around, I remember when you smell these oils, they're very strong. Um, here's some spearmint. Some of our essential oils give us a lift and some of us calm us down. Um, this is some geranium. You're gonna either love or hate geranium. <laughs> it can help with hormonal disorder and it can make you feel better if you like geranium. It's kind of like cilantro, a love-hate. Um, tangerine gives you a lift. It's a boost. We know that if someone makes fresh grapefruit juice or orange juice, it gives us a lift. And so if you have trouble waking up in the mornings, you can actually get a diffuser for 10 bucks on Amazon. I don't represent Amazon. And you can put it on a timer, six bucks at your hardware store, and you can have that essential oil burst through your room 10 minutes before your alarm's gonna go off. And when you go to wake up, it's like, ah, lime or lemon or orange. And if you have trouble going to sleep, you can do the same thing with a, with a, or the essential of the conscious down. This is Lang Lang. It gives you a little boost. They say it's one of the sexiest flowers on the planet. This is bergamot. It's in the orange family. It, they use it a lot in the industry of um, perfumes, bergamot. And this is Ravinsara, which can help clear your sinuses. You will be in a grumpy mood if your sinuses are mm -hmm. congested. So I want to let you know that herbs are there for us. And in the temple, everyone's been to Israel, the Western Wall, mm -hmm. inside our holy temple, the Beis HaMikdash, we had an altar uh -huh. where we burned essential oils and plants. So it's not just for the hip and funky people on Instagram, you know what I mean? It's really a Jewish thing to use herbs and essential oils. And in the Torah, the Chumash, the five books of Moses, when Rivka could not become pregnant, her, her son went out into the field and picked a Go plant. So I want everyone here to know that our moods are a gift from God, although they can get in the way of our success. And in Moodtopia, I teach you how to not be hijacked by your moods. Your moods are there to teach us something. But if someone's grumpy all the time, you can't be around them after a while. If someone's depressed all the time, they're gonna start losing their friends. So we wanna be able to cycle through our moods. We wanna remember to smile, laugh, do random acts of kindness, wear colors that make us feel good. Remember, we are energetic beings. We can bring light into the world. And I want everyone to know that a cup of herb tea can really help your psyche. We give it in tincture form, herbalist, because it's more medicinal. And I think everyone here can go to a store and find one essential oil you like. One, doesn't have to be expensive. And just put a couple drops in your car. Here you're in Florida, you can get a little piece of terracotta that hangs from your rear view mirror. You can put one drop of an essential oil before you go shopping. The sun will come in through the windshield and your whole car will smell delicious. I mean, it's gonna cost you under five bucks to do that. So I wanna open it up to questions. I wanna thank you again for coming to a 
book. Um, a, a, a book, what, what do we call it? A book. Uh, sure. Uh, yeah, um, because we are people of the book, and I really wanted to encourage you. I tell my, my clients all the time that go, Sarhana, read a book? Are you kidding me? Who has time to read a book? I say it's just like AA, one page at a time. One page at a time. Okay, questions, yes. So if people after this event would want to see this event all over again online or on Facebook, they'll go to Jewish Florida, is that correct? JewishFlorida.news? JewishFlorida.news, now tell a friend. JewishFlorida.what? JewishFlorida.news. And Jewish Florida on Facebook. And as an added, so with the RAC, yes. uh, it releases oxytocin, which is wonderful. Yes, it does. And not only the person who does it, but the but people who watch it, right? Yes, it, it really has a domino effect, random acts of kindness. It really does, physiologically. So would it be okay as a free bonus, are we okay with free here? <laughs> that in the links, in the comments on the, um, on the Facebook page for sure, and possibly on, on jewishflorida.news, that we include a video that gives you a bit of that oxytocin with an RAC. Is that yes, okay? Yes, sounds good to me. Absolutely. On what site? Uh, tell a friend. Excellent. And we will be doing a book signing lunch and making the, um, the vinegar. Okay, we had a question over here before. I told, yes, thank you. Well, I gave you Ravensara, which is an essential oil you can breathe in. It's similar to eucalyptus. I like Ravensara better. Um, I just feel it goes deeper. Um, you could dilute it, um, or you can inhale it on a tissue. And if you really suffer from sinuses, there's an herb called Yerba Santa. Yerba, Y-E-R-B-A, Santa, S-A-N-T-A. Um, two words. And a lot of herbal companies, I can tell you the herbal companies I like best, I'm not representing them. My favorite is Herbalist and Alchemist. And my second is Herb Farm, H-E-R-B-P-H-A-R-M. And my last one is Wish Garden. And they do have sinus blends, just to let you know. And sometimes it's better to start with a blend because you know your sinuses is it green? Is it yellow? Is it thick? Is it thin? You know what I mean? Does it drip down the back of your throat? These are all the questions herbalists ask. Yes? So for kids, can you make glycerines with any herbs like you would do tinctures or some of them don't work? So I, I use tinctures on kids. Um, what you tasted was in a glycerite. Um, when we make an herb, this is one of the things pharmaceutical companies do not love, is that when you make an herb in grain alcohol, it is a 10 year shelf life. When you make an herb in a glycerite, it only lasts about two years, but you can give your kids herbs in glycerite form. But yes, and all these herbs that I talk about are safe for children also. Yes, yes. I'm so glad you asked that. So Herbalist and Alchemist is the first company to put a kosher sign, um, and that's why I usually mention them first. The other two herbs that I mentioned, they use the same grain alcohol and glycerite as Herbalist and Alchemist. And so really every product is completely kosher. So all these plants, um, which people don't understand, are inspected by FDA. All these herbal plants, the real ones with herbalists like me, you know, overseeing it, they check for pesticides, lead, any toxicity. They all have chemists on board and they're very, very regulated, unlike what the press is going to tell you, very regulated. Yes, yes. Can you mix more than one herb in a diffuser? Uh, essential oil, yes you can. In my book, Moodtopia, I go oil by oil. I teach everything separately because I want to empower people um, to not feel like they need an herbalist to make their blends. But yes, of course you can because you can feel happy and sad and sleepless and tired at the same time, right? So of course you can make those different blends, yes. When you start taking it, let's say a child, for example, a teenager, yes. how long would it take for it to take effect? So the herbs, that I've, the herbs that I've discussed get into the bloodstream within 20 minutes. With herbs, um, the downside to herbs are you need to take them three times a day. The upside to herbs are that's how we're supposed to eat. 
So our three times a day, by the way, our brain reads the herbs as food, takes what it needs and dispels what it doesn't need. So if you take a medicine once a day, it's staying in our body in an inappropriate way because we need to eat, digest, go to the bathroom and eat, digest again, right? So herbs three times a day. If someone's having, going through a crisis, right? Okay, you come to me, Sarhana, I'm losing my mind. I'm like, give me five, I get it, right? Because like, I can relate. So I would have them take the herbs three times a day for four to six weeks to lower their cortisol levels, remember? Because if she's at... 250, I want to lower the cortisol levels to 125. Then she can take the herbs as needed. And what's amazing is in clinical studies with post-operative patients, when they are given morphine in a morphine pump, where they can regulate their own dosage of morphine, they take less morphine than when it's given by a nurse. So what we find with herbal medicine, because one of your questions should be like, does the body get used to it? Do you build resistance to it? And the answer is, I've never met a woman or a man that takes it when they don't need it. I really beg them to take it for four to six weeks straight, but then you take it as needed. You're going to the airport. Oh my gosh, I have to go through security. What did I leave at home? Take a little skull cap, it's calming, right? You get to a destination, you're like, oh my God, I'm at the beach, it's gorgeous, but I'm gloomy. Take a little motherboard. You're not gonna be addicted to feeling better. You're just gonna feel better. And here's the other thing. Onions in the Materia Medica, which is our um, physician desk reference for herbs, onions are considered an herb. They're anti-inflammatory, they help balance the immune system. So you're not gonna say, yesterday I put in four onions in my chicken soup, so today I'm not putting any onions in with my chicken. Of course not, we don't limit it, right? Yes, next question. Hey, what's the measure for the what's the measure for the herbs okay so good question what's the measure for the diffuser and what's the measure for the herbs so with essential oils it, it's just how potent you want the smell i like my smells pretty intense i also like cayenne pepper so i like my taste mm. intense so i'm going to put in more if you're the type that like a subtle fragrance and you're only going to put in a couple drops if you're going to take the herbs medicinally um, if you take a tincture like this, and the reason I like it in tincture more than teas is because it's going to be stronger and more potent because they take the plant and put it in grain alcohol. I don't like herbs in capsules because they lose their essence. Think about parsley. You buy parsley, you're going to cook with it. You forget to make it. It's in the fridge. Two days later, it gets yellow. Two days later, it starts to get limp. You throw it in the garbage. So when you squeeze a tincture bottle like this, it's 25 drops and that's the typical dose of a typical and again when you work with an herbalist we tweak it but that's a safe dose for everybody of all ages yes frankincense in um the essential oil is very good for meditation and getting your brain in that place um of focusing when we take it internally, it's anti-inflammatory for periodontal gum disease, um, swelling in the joints, um, and it's also good for people with seizures. So it's a very, very amazing herb frankincense. I would take it in tincture form because I'm an herbalist and I do most of my work in tincture form because I'm solving real problems. Mm -hmm. um, but you can burn it in an essential oil also. Some people chew the resin of it, but I would probably get it from a reputable company in tincture form. Yes, good question, yes. Do, do you suggest we know our cortisol level before we do this? Uh, no, because it varies all the time. And I mean like, I know when I have a high cortisol level, you know what I mean? And my kids know when I have a high cortisol level, right? Like, it's no joke. So I'm not worried about getting our cortisol levels too low. We are Jewish people. We are a little neurotic. I'm not concerned about it. Yes. <laughs> So yeah, you don't have to do lavender, but I would mix motherwort. See, there's a guy that's a little moody with skull cap. Those are the two herbs that would come to mind. A little motherwort and skull cap um, will probably. And again, when he gets angry, say, oh my God, that's such an amazing emotion. 
I, I'm so impressed that you have that. Look at the energy and strength, um, but let's try to contain it right now. So I used to tell my kids, and I'm not a perfect parent, but I used to say, everything you're feeling is correct. The way you're showing it right now needs to be tweaked, right? It's okay if you feel that. I just want to make sure that you're, you know, it's not going to slap you across the face. Yes, did you have a question? Yes. No, if you have an alcohol problem, not you, but if anybody does, you can put it in a glycerite, but alcohol tends to break down the plant. And if you're taking 25 drops of the herb three times a day, you're barely taking a half a teaspoon. I mean, it's, a, it's, it's about a teaspoon of alcohol, which is fine because it, you know, I mean, alcohol in excess, of course, but it also um, lowers blood pressure in small amounts. And when we make our product, vinegar also works similarly to grain alcohol. Our apple cider vinegar can help regulate our blood sugar levels. We know that apple cider vinegar can help with pre-diabetics get their sugar levels under control. Um, it also reduces inflammation and it helps our pH in our stomach be um, more alkaline and less acidic. So this, now when we go out there to make this, you're gonna see we have onions, garlic, we have um, some thyme, we have some rosemary, we have hot peppers, mm. and we have black peppers. So there's no specific recipe. I'll be by the table making it with you. If you don't want it spicy, you're not going to put your hot pepper in there. <laughs> um, if you don't like thyme, you're not going to put thyme in there, right? So you can make this to any combination that you want. Um, you want it more oniony, you'll put more oniony. Every single uh, one of ours is going to be a little bit different. You're going to, I'm just reminding you again, you're going to take this home. What I'd like you to do is get a little piece of cellophane to put between here. Let me show you. Yeah, because the, the tin from the jar can get into. So when you get home, take a little, either a baggie or a little piece of cellophane, is that what it's called, saran wrap? Right. And not cellophane, thank you. And you're gonna then put this on here. We also have a little dash of honey because the honey's gonna give us the sweet and sour, kind of little ting to it. And it also helps preserve the, the, um, the uh, herbs that are in there, yes. I'm so glad she asked. She asked, what about the CBD fat? Thank you so much. Right. So CBD cannabis is not a newly discovered plant. In our Materia Medica, we've known about it for thousands of years. The downside to cannabis is when you smoke it, it's very addictive. I don't care what anybody says, it's more addictive than tobacco because in tobacco they add additives to make you addicted to it. Um, cannabis is very naturally addictive because who wants to face reality? It's really hard. Now, when you take the THC out of it, you don't have that addictive component to it. Now, as an herbalist, we don't believe that CBD is curative the word is palliative, meaning when you use it, it can help, but when you stop it, it tends to come back. It can help reduce seizure disorder. We do know that. But when you work with an herbalist, we really want to heal something. So I brought St. John's Wort oil just for that question. Thank you. St. John's Wort oil is for nerve pain. St. John's Wort, if you take it internally, helps with depression. But this is for toothaches or nerve pain. So I have a little nerve pain down my left arm sometimes. I would rather put St. John's Wort because it's more curative than CBD. If you find it helps you, fine. But it's very hard to find a good product because they're all adulterated by now. And I don't think it's as curative as everybody wants to think that it is. Does that answer your question? If it helps you, great. But there's so many, we have Arnica oil, we have plantain oil, we have comfrey oil, we have St. John's wort oil, and all these oils are curative. And that's what I want. When a client comes to me, I don't want them to be addicted to me. They can be my friend. I want to teach them what to do to move on with their lives, right? That's what herbalists, and that's why we're not as popular as doctors. 
because we don't want you to have to come to us a lot. Ginger is a great herb. Um, it can help reduce inflammation. Um, I don't like pregnant moms to take it during their pregnancies because it brings blood flow to the pelvis area. I like them to take it after babies. And it's really, it's really very warming if you tend to feel cold. I mean, you can't really feel that in Florida. Mm -hmm. But if you internally feel cold, um, ginger heats up from the inside out. So I did a little video on Instagram saying as the weather changes, not only dress warm, for the cold from the outside, but take ginger to heat you up on the inside. Yes. Last question. Yes. Last question. I have like a hundred questions. Okay. What? Okay. I'm going to ask this question and let them have one. So everyone asks me every time I, I speak, what's the magic herb to lose weight? <laughs> there is none. Eat less, exercise more. You have to cut down on carbs and exercise. Last question. Any other questions as our last final question? Thank you for joining us. I really appreciate it. If you want to make the vinegar, come join us. And thank you, David, and the Keevmans and the JCC for putting together this lovely event. Thank you. Number one, I asked a more important question yesterday because I wanted to know which herbs I could take to look like Fabio. <laughs> I picked up Sarah at the airport last night. There were none, so I made her walk from Fort Lauderdale Airport <laughs> to Aventura. One, we want to thank you all very much for being here today for a wonderful, wonderful program. Number two. Yeah, let's give Sarah a big round of applause again. <laughs> Secondly, we thank Chabad Chayil, Project Connect, for being the sponsor of today's program. There's information outside regarding the other author events that are coming up. The next set will be February 5th, February 10th, and February 12th. So we have a whole series of author events coming up, which are offered to you complimentary. Thirdly, for those of you who have paid for lunch, lunch will be served momentarily in the Lipton lobby. Only those with wristbands will be able to partake in that food. And I know Rabbi Keeman is still registering people for lunch. And there's still a few books left if you want, wish to purchase the Mutopia book. We are going to have book signing here in this room once all these herbs come off the table. I'm moving the table down on the floor and book signing with Sarah will take place in this room. What did I leave out? Mashiach Wen. Thank you for streaming. What? Mashiach Wen. But. Now. Anyway. Again. We'll be signing here, food outside, and Miami Spine is giving complimentary hand massages as part of the flex of ability to get you to relax, and that's right outside as well, and that's complimentary. Thank you all, and Beth Albert, good job. <laughs>